Hey folks, Daniel Myers, Developer Relations here at Snowflake. On today's episode of Powered By, I'm talking with Lior Gavish, co-founder of Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is a data observability company powered by Snowflake. Lior, how are you today? I'm great, Daniel. Thank you, Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you today because you know, it, it really seems like what you're doing at Monte Carlo is pretty awesome. Can you tell me more about uh, you know, y the, the founding story of it and kind of how it's grown over the last couple of years? So Monte Carlo is a data observability company, as you mentioned. Uh, we started about two years ago. Uh, and uh, what we do is we help uh, data teams manage the reliability, the quality uh, of their data products, right? So we have a lot of data engineers, data scientists, data analysts out there, uh, and they're building products. So they're putting in the hands of other people. They're giving them analytics dashboards, machine learning models, um, data sets that are used in production or sold to, to customers and partners. Um, and we're basically helping, helping them make sure that those products uh, are at the quality and reliability level that they need to be. We started this company just recognizing that um, there's been a lot of work over the last couple of decades helping software engineers deli deliver reliable products, right? With today, when you log into Snowflake uh, or Google, it just works, right? And it works uh, with five nines and whatnot. Uh, but people that build data products um, struggle with that. Uh, when we started Monte Carlo two years ago and we spoke to over 100 data teams before we did that, we realized that everyone um, is struggling with um, how do I make these products reliable? How do I make sure that the people consuming the data actually trust it and that it's working at a good level? And, and we built Monte Carlo to both build the, the discipline, like the equivalent of site reliability engineering for uh, data teams, and also to build the tooling, right? And in Monte Carlo, the product is really a platform that helps teams uh, operationalize reliability, right? To understand uh, when data is broken, uh, to then resolve it as quickly as possible. And in many cases, we've actually been able to help customers prevent downtime in their data products from happening in the first place. And it's been a great ride so far. We've been very lucky to partner with, uh, with some great customers in the industry. We, We've doubled our customer base and our revenue every single quarter wow, uh, yeah. since we started. Um, and we work with some great companies, including uh, the New York Times and Vimeo and Affirm uh, and a few Fortune 500s as well. So it's been a great ride, and, and we're very proud to work with uh, all these wonderful companies. We've also been fortunate to work with great partners on the investing side. We've raised over $100 million from funds like Excel uh, and GGV and Redpoint. Uh, and those are the sa same uh, backers that, that helped uh, Snowflake and Looker uh, start their businesses, and we're very excited to, to partner with them. That's awesome. That's, that's really powerful to hear. And it really seems like it's, it's a good time because as, as more and more companies are considering themselves to be data companies, right, it, it means it's even more important to make sure that the data that you have, you, one, you can get insights from it, uh, and be making sure that it is, you know, reliable, right? Um, so that's really cool. Uh, you know, can we see a demo of this platform today? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, happy to walk you through how um, our customers experience Monte Carlo. And um, as I mentioned, um, our uh, our goals are to help people understand when data is broken and then act on it as quickly as possible um, and even prevent it. Um, with the overall overarching goal to eliminate as much downtime as we can, right? Minimize that. And so the way most of our customers experience Monte Carlo in their day-to-days is actually through Slack. So the first thing that a Monte Carlo user experiences is a Slack notification that might tell them that something is broken with their data. And the magic here is that they can get those Slack notifications with practically zero configuration or setup or threshold setting, Monte Carlo takes care of it. So it automatically connects to the data infrastructure. And a lot of our customers use Snowflake. We're very excited about that. So they can connect their Snowflake data into Monte Carlo. And we automatically map all of the tables that they have there, all of the dependencies, and all of the metrics that are required in order to understand data health. 
And then we automatically build machine learning models that can determine whether data is healthy and whether things are working as expected. When it doesn't, we'll send an, a Slack notification or an email notification or a pager duty alert and let them know that something is broken. So one example of that that I can show today is right here. And this is from our own Monte Carlo on Monte Carlo account. So this is our own environment. And in this particular case, we've identified that there's an issue with a particular table in our very own Snowflake account. The table here is called monitors. And what Monte Carlo identified here is essentially that rows have been deleted from the table, right? And this is a table, as we'll see in a bit, this is a table that usually only adds data and it adds rows as time passes. And we've identified a deletion. And that's something uh, that in a production environment can indicate an issue, right? Why is data being removed? And so I might get this alert. And then I can go into Monte Carlo. And let me flip over here to the dashboard. I can go into Monte Carlo and really understand what's happening, right? And the first step when you get an alert is to understand, A, what happened. And this is what you see on the graph right here. This is the, essentially the volume of data in this table over time. Is it, and, and it's pretty easy to see that it's constantly increasing. In this case, on this particular date, on October 12th, we've seen a little drop, which might be an indication of an issue, right? The next step for someone that uses Monte Carlo is maybe to ask themselves, does this even matter? Should I act on it? What's the priority of this issue? And we try to help with doing that by providing a lot of context on how this table gets used in data products, right? Maybe this is just a table that nobody uses and I, sh I can move on with my day. Or maybe it's driving the most important reports in the company and I should be working on it right now and letting the people using those dashboards know that things are broken, right? And Monte Carlo will, will help me do that in, in various ways. So for example, if you can see this little star here, it actually automatically lets me know that this is a key asset. And this is something that Monte Carlo does fully automatically based on usage statistics, based on lineage that we automatically derive. We're able to tell what are some of the most important tables that people have in their environment, in their account. This is actually powered by Snowflake. We actually bring a lot, of, a lot of data about our customers' data environment into Snowflake and run analytics that help us automatically detect those key assets using machine learning. So this is one indication that might help me understand this is actually an important issue. The other thing here that might draw my attention is we provide visibility into what are some of the downstream products that are that data flows into from this table, right? And, and this th includes very indirect relationships. Like there might be dozens and dozens of processing steps before data from this table ends in that product. But really knowing that this table impacts, in this case, the customer 360 report, which is our single most important report at Monte Carlo. It's how we know how our customers are doing. It makes me think this is something that I, I might want to take a deeper look into, right? And Monte Carlo will help understand all the changes in my environment that could have contributed to this issue, right? Like this drop that I'm seeing in, in data volume, it might happen because someone changed the code, the queries that are generating this table. It might happen because the upstream data changed in, in a way that I don't expect. And Monte Carlo really gives a lot of visibility into that. Here, we can see the, the lineage view, which is automatically generated and it helps me understand where data is coming from into this table. It also shows, shows me how it's directly used downstream. It gives information about the queries that are writing data into this table. So I can quickly see changes in those queries. And, and you can actually tell there was, a, there was a change right here. I can even go into that and see what the query is and what it was before the change. And I can see a lot of additional information that might be helpful when, when troubleshooting this table, including freshness when this table was updated, the changes in volume, any schema changes that occurred in this table that might, might contribute to the issue, and a lot of other information, including analytics about the data itself whether I'm seeing nulls, whether I'm seeing duplicates, whether I'm seeing cents instead of dollars. 
things like that. So all of that goes into the platform, and this is all powered by Snowflake. Again, so these are all things that we bring into Snowflake, and we use it both for serving to drive the application that you're seeing in front of you. We also, our, our data science team uses it to actually build those models, right? So mm -hmm. our ability to detect issues fully automatically in real time is actually driven by, by the great work we've done on the Snowflake platform. So that's really cool. So, you know, when you mentioned at the very beginning, right, all of this is, is really starts at that notification, right? How is it that you are finding these things in near real time? What we do is uh, we basically uh, take all of those metrics that we've talked about that help us understand data health. So it's data freshness, data volume, um, schema, um, the distribution, right? Null rates, duplicates, things like that, and lineage. We bring all of that into a single platform. Um, and then we build models that look at past patterns. Um, so in this example, um, what, uh, what, does, what do volume changes look like for this particular table? And when we build a model that essentially uses that past information to predict what we expect to see um, today, right? And if we see that the that reality, that what we're seeing in the environment deviates uh, from those past trends, uh, we're able to automatically generate that alert uh, and notify the customer that there's something to be, to be looked at. So that's incredible. So how is it that, you know, as you were going about building this product, which by the way, over the last two years, you know, it's, it's incredible to see where it is. Um, how, how did you land on Snowflake being a core part of your tech stack? It was a pretty easy decision for us. Um, when we first started out, um, we, uh, so we actually work with a lot of data teams. Um, and we help our customers monitor uh, Snowflake, as well as other uh, solutions out there and, and other pieces of the, the stack, including BI tools and data lakes and orchestrators like Airflow and DBT. Um, and so we got really good uh, you know, a bird's eye view of what, of, the, of what the industry looks like and what people are using out there and how it fits into different use cases. And we really got excited about um, Snowflake as a solution for ourselves. Um, several reasons. Um, so we run our, our application on AWS um, and we knew we wanted um, a solution that would run there close to where uh, our, our uh, operational environment is running. Uh, we knew we wouldn't want to be moving uh, vast data sets across clouds. And we knew that we wanted a solution that will allow us both serve production use cases and development exploration for our data scientists with the same data sets, uh, but in a way where the data science work doesn't impact uh, our production workloads. Makes and it requires minimum management and scaling on our end. We were a startup. Uh, we, we've only been around for two years. Uh, and we knew we, we were going to grow, uh, and we wanted to, to have a partner that, that can do that uh, with us, and that can allow us that flexibility with, with minimal operational overhead. So that's really cool. So you know, as, as you're building, you know, continuing to build uh, this platform, uh, what Snowflake features would you say have been the most critical to the, to the building of your platform? Absolutely. Uh, we're, uh, we, we extensively use uh, external tables that allow us to basically very easily get data from uh, our streaming sources, from our operational environment into Snowflake and build our, our analytics and machine learning models on top of that. Uh, so that's been uh, incredibly powerful for us. Um, we've also uh, used uh, time travel uh, extensively. It's incredibly powerful when we need to troubleshoot an issue, uh, especially in production use cases, uh, to really be able to walk back in time and see what things looked like uh, when the problem actually happened. Um, and then something I'm very excited about, and, 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 and I, can, uh, I can actually show you what it looks like, we've built what we call insights, which is really the first solution out there to help data teams with operational information about 
the reliability, performance, and even the impact and the effectiveness of their, of, of their work over the data platform. And the way we do that is we create a lot of very valuable data sets for our customers. So for example, we'll help them understand what are the key assets in their environment. We'll help them understand where they're covered in, ter in terms of monitoring and testing. We'll help them understand where they're incurring data debt, where there's things that could be deprecated, and many other things that help really operate the data platform itself. And it's the first time that people can do it with actual data. And of course, we made it available in our UI, as you see here, you can download those reports. It's also available through API. But what we're really excited about, and our customers are excited about, is really using Snowflake data sharing to put that information back into our customer's environment. So some of our customers actually have access to those data sets in their own Snowflake account, and they're really able to join that information with other data sets that they have, yeah. with metadata that they have, and really customize the analytics and the solution to their own needs and to their own way of operating their platform. And that's that's been incredible for our customers. I love hearing that because you know I know data sharing on Snowflake is one of those features that a lot of people you know I think underestimate the power that it provides and uh, giving customers control over their own data in that way, having them be able to join that data uh, with other data that they are also gathering from their own product sources. Or even product, uh, or even data that they're purchasing from the data marketplace, right? They can do all of that through data sharing. So that's that's really cool to hear. I'm glad uh, that's a that's a, a big element for you. Um, you know, so moving forward, like, what are your personal goals for the company over the next six to twelve months? We start Monte Carlo to really um, make our customers happy. That's first and foremost, and. Uh, and to make a change in our industry, right? We, we believe there's an enormous opportunity to help really democratize data and help productize it and help make it more accessible for people. And so my personal goal over the next 12 months is to continue to drive that and to continue uh, the level of growth uh, that we've seen, right? And in order to do that, we need to, um, we need to build out our team and grow our team. Uh, and we also need to go out there and, 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 and improve our product in many ways, right? Like we want to stay ahead in this market. We want to build the best uh, observability solution out there uh, and really give our customers the best observability experience uh, and the best feature set uh, to manage their platform. That's awesome. And so for our viewers today, if they want to learn more about Monte Carlo, where should they go online? We're very active on LinkedIn, so please uh, follow Monte Carlo Data on, on LinkedIn uh, or visit us on uh, MonteCarloData.com. Awesome, awesome. And for all of our viewers here today, if you're looking to build your next application or business on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. Thanks. Thank you, Al.